for our very first topic in this channel, we will be covering, that's right, you guessed it, folks, credit cards. Yeah, so what we'll be outlining today are these here topics. One, what is a credit? What does that mean? Two, how do credit cards actually work? Three, why you should. Let me emphasize this, folks. Let me just emphasize this real quick. Never, ever use credit cards unless you're not gonna be an idiot while using a credit card. Then you should use one. All right, so that's a summary of the topics we'll cover today. Let's get started with the first topic. What is credit? What does that mean? All right, lucky for you all, I have my fancy Oxford Dictionary that I'll be using to look this up. The Oxford Dictionary defines credit as the ability of a customer to obtain goods or services before payment based on the trust that payment will be made in the future. That basically just means that credit is a measure of trust, right? So if someone has credit, that just means, hey, I trust that you'll pay me back. You'll do what you say you're gonna actually do, right? So credit is a measure for trust. Credit is just basically saying, hey, give me this stuff now. I'm good for it. I'll pay you back. Let's start off talking about how credit cards work. That's right. How do these dang little pieces of plastic, how do they work? This, of course, isn't my credit card because who would be stupid enough to put a working credit card online for the internet for everyone to see? That would just be foolish. I wouldn't do that. So before we can talk about credit cards, we'll have to define a few things. That's right. We'll have to do everyone's favorite thing, which is learning some vocabulary. So let's start out. First thing we must learn is what a credit limit is. So whenever you're given a credit card, you basically have a limit on how much you can spend using that credit card, right? Then it'll give you an unlimited amount to spend when you get a credit card. You get a limit on how much you can spend using your credit card, and it's usually like one or two thousand dollars, right? Something like that. Next is something called a balance, right? So whenever you spend money on your credit card, you can spend up to the credit limit, but if you don't spend up to the credit limit, whatever you spend on a credit card, it is known as a balance. So this is how much you've spent of your credit limit, right? Real simple. Then there's this concept called available credit, right? So basically available credit is your credit limit minus your balance is equal to available credit. It's basically what you have left to spend after you subtract what you've already spent, right? Simple. Next, we have something called a billing cycle. This is basically how often you have to make payments on your balance that's due on your credit card, right? So a billing cycle would normally be about one month for a credit card, right? Every month you have to pay something on your balance to move that balance down to show that you are actually going to pay back the money and to, you know, pay some of it back. Next, we have this concept of a statement due date. So basically, every month or however long your billing cycle happens to be, on a certain date, you will be required to pay back that money. That's when it will be due. Otherwise, it will become late. If you pass your statement due date and don't pay anything on your billing cycle, you can get charged something called a late fee, right? So that's just basically money owed because you didn't pay your credit card bill in time by the statement due date. Next, we have the concept of a minimum payment. So basically the minimum payment is what you must pay on your statement due date so that you don't get a late fee, right? It's the minimum amount you can pay on your credit card, the minimum amount you can pay on your credit card balance such that you do not get a late fee and that you must pay by the statement due date of every billing cycle, right? Stuff all connects. Finally, we have this concept called annual percentage rate or APR. The annual percentage rate is the percentage that you pay in interest every year on the balance that you have on your credit card if you pay the minimum payment every billing cycle. Clear as mud. I wanna emphasize this really important point. All these points right here, 
they're outlined in something that is given to you when you apply for a credit card is that giant packet that you get, right? That no one, let's be honest, no one reads. Most of these things will be defined in that giant packet they give you. So maybe a good idea to, I don't know, go over it, at least highlight the important stuff, right? So whenever you get a credit card, the credit card company is basically saying, here you go. This is yours, this little piece of plastic, and you have the opportunity to take out a loan with this piece of plastic whenever you want. That's all they're saying, right? So whenever you go and use that credit card, you're like, well, credit, credit, credit. You basically are taking out a loan, and that loan is basically the balance, how much you're actually taking out. And whenever you take out a loan, you have to, you have to not only pay it back, right? That's important. In case you didn't know, you have to pay back your credit card, guys. But you also have to pay it back with something called interest, right? And interest is basically a super important concept, but it is basically just the cost of borrowing money for a certain amount of time, right? The more time you borrow money, generally the more interest you pay. And interest is defined as basically a percentage of the amount of money you borrow for a given period of time, right? That's what interest is. Interest in terms of a credit card is going to be the annual percentage rate. Now this, by law, all credit cards must give you interest in terms of the annual percentage rate. One credit card cannot give you a daily percentage rate and the other credit card cannot give you a monthly percentage rate. They all give you interest rates using the same units, which is the annual percentage rate, APR. That way you can compare credit cards, right? Know that one credit card is screwing you over by charging you 30% interest, when another one is only screwing you over a tiny bit less by charging you 20% interest, right? So that's an important concept to understand about credit cards there. So whenever you swipe your credit card, you essentially are saying, I'm gonna take out this loan. And whenever you take out that loan, AKA whenever you have a balance, you must pay them their money back in a set period of time which is each billing cycle, you must pay them back on a specific day of the billing cycle, which is the statement due date, and you must pay them back at least some small amount, which is the minimum payment. And part of that minimum payment goes to pay off the balance, what you actually borrowed. Then a part of that minimum payment also goes to paying off interest. That is an important thing to know. Let me give you all just a little quick example of how a credit card will work, right? So let's say you have a credit card, right? You swipe it and you use it just one time that year, right? So you swipe it and you spend $10 represented by 10 cute little squares. So when you swipe that credit card, you borrowed $10 as a loan and you said, hey, I'm gonna pay this back later, but I want this money now. That's what you said. And in the agreements for that credit card, you have to pay back a minimum payment of $1 per month every month for 12 months. That's how you're gonna pay off this loan. Well, wait a second. Let's do some simple math here, all right? So $1 per month for 12 months, how much are you actually paying back? That's right. You're paying back $12 to borrow that $10. So. Let's think about that for real, one second. $12 to borrow $10. That means that you are paying $2 in interest. That's what it costs you to borrow that $10 at the beginning of the year. You're paying $2 by the end of the year to borrow that $10. Now, what APR is that? If you do all the math, that equates to 20% in interest and it'll be an APR because you paid it over one whole year. So that's a 20% APR. Cool, interesting. Now you get basically from this simple example how a credit card works, right? You borrow the money, you pay back the money over time, and then you pay a little bit extra for being able to borrow that money early when you didn't have that money. Now that we've talked about how credit cards work, let's go through why you should never use a credit card. Why? So, remember how we talked about how when you use a credit card, it's basically like taking out a loan? Well, when you take out a loan, right, you have to pay back extra money, and that extra money is called interest, right? All credit cards have interest, and 
Would you like to take a stab at what the average credit card interest rate is on an annual percentage rate basis? Please, think about it. That's right. The average credit card has an APR of 16.46%. Now, what does that really mean? So, the average household has a revolving credit card balance of $6,929 as of 2018 data. And what that means is they have to pay roughly 16.46% on average just as interest. So 16.46% times $6,929. What is that approximately? That means they pay $1,141 in interest every year that they amount $6,929 worth of credit card debt. That's roughly, if you think about it, about one in $7 going towards interest. And then each of those $6 that are left over are going towards paying down the principal. So one in $7 goes down to pay interest on average when you are dealing with a credit card. This is just average numbers. They can be much, much worse than this. And that is why, guys, it's so, so important that you check your credit card's APR and read those rates and better yet, never use a credit card. So with this information, let's do a little experiment. So let's say you have $6,929 in credit card debt and your interest rate is a whopping 16.46%. Now, if your minimum payment is $140 minimum monthly payment, how long do you think it would take to pay off your credit card debt? And also, how much interest do you think you would have to pay in total compared to the amount of your original balance? Don't worry, I'll give you that shockingly, shockingly atrocious answer, right? Now, the answer is, it would take you approximately 84 months to pay off that $6,929 in credit card debt if you paid $140 monthly in minimum payments. 84 months, or approximately forever? 84 months is about seven years, if you think about that. Let that sink in for a second. Seven years to pay off that credit card debt of just $6,929. Seven years. In an average person's lifetime, that's maybe, what, eight, nine percent of your life spent off trying to pay off this amount of debt if you just pay the minimum payments. And, oh, not only that, not only that, it also cost $4,745 just in interest that you pay over those seven years to cover your original balance of $6,929 or approximately two thirds? You are paying roughly two thirds of your original balance in interest if you just pay the minimum payment. That, that should bring a frowny face to your face right now. And a frowny face and, and some tears. That's what you should be getting right now. And since most people, when they borrow money from a credit card, they don't have the means or really the desire to pay more than the monthly average payment. You shouldn't. You really, really shouldn't. Let me emphasize this. You really, really shouldn't have or use a credit card if you will only pay the minimum monthly payment because the credit card companies will make out like bandits. They will take you for nearly two thirds of what your original balance was. That's what they'll take for letting you borrow their money. So hopefully, hopefully you guys got that under your head. You guys understand that you should just never use a credit card, please. Unless you're not going to be an idiot with it. So what do I mean by that? Well, the number one most important thing I mean by that is if you're going to use a credit card, you need to pay back your balance in full every month. Now, what does that essentially mean? Well, most credit card companies, they give you about a 30 day grace period whenever you have a balance on your credit card 
to actually pay back that credit card debt. And in that grace period, they do something really nice for you. They don't charge you any interest, right? They give you a little opportunity there. So within that grace period, you must be willing and able to pay back your credit card balance in full or else you should never use a credit card and you're kind of being an idiot with one. So why would you even want to use a credit card with all these crazy interest rates and all these crazy things that I've told you about with them? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The main reason you should use a credit card is because of points and cash back offers. Remember when I mentioned that credit cards make their money from basically two ways. They charge you interest, number one, and number two, they charge merchants a percentage of the sale they have to process with through their credit cards, right? Through their credit card networks. The way credit cards make a ton of money is it's only possible if a bunch of merchants use that same credit card network or allow that same credit card to be used at their stores, right? Well, merchants won't allow those credit cards to be used at their stores unless, unless consumers like you and me are advocating that we want to use our credit cards of this specific brand at their store. The more people who advocate for a specific credit card brand, right? And say, I'm not willing to pay for things at your store unless you allow me to use this credit card brand and make it convenient for me, the more merchants that are willing to accept that credit card brand and the more stuff they'll sell through that credit card brand's network and the more money the credit card network and that credit card brand will make. So if that all makes sense to you, the credit card companies ultimately need people like you and people like me to use their credit cards. The only way they do that for most intelligent people is by offering points and cash back reward if we use their credit cards. Now, what I mean by that is many card, especially in terms of the travel and airline industry, if you get a credit card through them, specifically I'm thinking of American Airlines, Delta, United Airlines, you know, the big ones. If you get a credit card through those airline industries, you get points that you can use, which is basically just like casino tokens. That's basically what it's like, right? You can use those casino tokens to buy things and get services at a casino, right? Much the same way you can use points and airline to buy upgrades to your seats or perhaps buy free flights even, right? Great stuff. And also credit card companies even offer you a cash back percentage. So usually credit card companies allow you to get back a certain percentage of whatever you spend as just cash back money. It's just, hey, Thank you for spending this money with us. We'll give you a little bit back. It's like a little discount, right? That's what it is, but really the fees paid by the credit card merchants, the merchants using their credit cards, it's much higher than the percentage they give us back, right? That's where they make significant difference. Most credit card companies offer about 1%, maybe 2% back, cash back on your purchases if you are super lucky. Now, Let's roll back a second here. Credit cards offer you percent back, right? When you use them. Merchants have to pay a percentage fee whenever you use credit cards. What do merchants do if they accept credit cards? They almost certainly, almost certainly increase their products to cover the fees that credit card companies make them pay, right? So their profit margins stay pretty consistent. So. Basically, what I'm saying is if you pay in cash, you're losing out because the credit card companies are making those products more expensive because merchants have to pay a fee for everyone else who uses credit cards while you use cash to get that item. And also, you're missing out on the points and cash back offers that credit card companies are willing to give you. So that is a major reason why if you're not going to be an idiot with a credit card and you are going to pay back your monthly balance in full, meaning they will, cannot and will not charge you any interest, you should definitely, definitely get a credit card and use one. Specifically credit cards that offer lots of points or lots of cash back returns and rewards. And I might link some of those in the description below just for you because you're my special viewers. Now, 
I have a little bonus lesson for you, a little bonus, right? Everyone, everyone makes mistakes. So what if you are an idiot and actually racked up a huge credit card balance, right? And didn't use your credit card wisely. And then you all of a sudden came to Young Money and started watching this video and realized, shit, this sucks. What am I gonna do? Well, I have the answer for you. Number one, you need to, Listen to me, listen to me very carefully. You need to pay that balance off immediately, immediately. When you have credit card debt and you weren't able to pay off the balance before the grace period ended, before your one month ended, or however long you had without them charging you interest, it is an emergency. You have to allocate every freaking penny that you make every freaking one that you do not absolutely need need i'm talking just for shelter and for food and maybe maybe just a little bit of water all of that money that is left over after you spend it on bare necessities bare necessities i'm not talking about that starbucks latte you get or that fancy new thing you need for your car, or that new piece of vlogging equipment. No, don't buy any of that, all right? You have to use all that money to pay off that your credit card balance immediately, right? So that the interest at that crazy annual percentage rate stops accruing. So a couple of other things you all can do if you do find yourself in this terrible, terrible situation, right? And you cannot pay off your balance immediately, even though that would be the very, very best thing for you to do. You should allocate every last penny towards paying it off immediately, all right? I don't know how many times I can say that. You have to do that. But if it's not enough to cover your credit card debt in any reasonable amount of time before, you know, more interest starts accumulating, you can try to do one of these two options. You can try to transfer your credit card balance to one that has a 0% APR. So credit cards, whenever you open one, they sometimes have this special offer where they charge you 0% in terms of an annual percentage rate, or they give you, you know, free money basically. They allow you to borrow free money for some amount of time, maybe a year before they start charging you interest, right? And sometimes those credit cards allow you to transfer a balance from another credit card onto them, right? So if you can do that successfully, then you may buy yourself some time so that you can pay off your credit card balance. When? That's right. Pay it off immediately. The problem with this is that when you transfer a credit card balance, it usually comes with some kind of fee, right? It depends on the type of credit card, but if you don't have very good credit history and apply for some low-level cards or those are the only ones you can get, even if you do get 0% APR, they might charge you a transfer fee, which if you do some simple math, maybe better than paying the interest rate on your other card. So you may want to do this, all right? So, you know, something to think about. The other option is to use something called Lending Club or Prosper, which is basically people who have spare money. They pool together their money, right? $100, $1,000, whatever. They pool up their money, right? And Lending Club basically allows people who are in credit card debt to borrow that money, right? That's what Lending Club and Prosper both do. So... This is more akin to a formal kind of loan. Instead of loaning it from a bank, you loan it just from several hundred people, right? They all give you some amount of money and then you can use that money to pay off the balance of your credit card immediately. And they will instead charge you a fixed interest rate that is almost without a doubt, much, much better than the interest rate charged by credit card. So. Those are your two options, two fairly good options if you are stuck in a bad situation with some credit card debt. And yeah, here's a little bonus for you all. I hope you enjoyed. Hope maybe you all found it somewhat useful. I hope you all enjoyed that edition of Young Life Presents Lessons on Credit Cards. So hopefully you all took something away from that and got the gist of what I wanted to give to you about credit cards, which is that credit cards, they can be a double-edged sword, right? They can be really, really dangerous and really, really 
damaging and burdensome if you use them in the wrong ways. And on the other hand, they can be a great and useful tool to keep some financial wealth for yourself, right? Some percentage of your spending for yourself and to also get some nice parks and some nice free stuff along the way, like airline flights and free nights in hotels, whatever, whatever those training people get, right? There are nice things you can get with credit cards and it's definitely, definitely a double-edged sword. So hopefully you got that lesson. And please, please, whether you like this video, which I hope you all did, and found it maybe mildly amusing, maybe a lot amusing, or you didn't like it so much and didn't like some of the content or didn't like the lighting, didn't like the setup, whatever, please leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought and if you thought this video was interesting and want more content like this, please give me a like and maybe, maybe if I deserved it or if I've earned it, give me a subscribe. Drop that in there. That button should be right down there. Right down there, folks. I'll draw an arrow. Right down there, folks. Subscribe. It'll make me smile. It'll make you smile, too, to do good stuff for some other people. So, anyway, that's it for Young Life on this first episode. Expect some more. Coming your way shortly. Thanks, y'all.